I'm Master Cicerone Mirella Amato, and today I'm going to do something a little different. Those of you who are familiar with my work with beerology will know that I never do any kind of beer reviews. But what I'm going to do today is a beer review of sorts. I say of sorts because what I'm reviewing is not exactly a beer. That is to say, it's not a beer yet. It's this right here. This is the 1919 Pale Rail by Pat's Backcountry Beverages. It's 49% alcohol in its current state. And I've read about a number of these products that are meant for camping, where you can pack it with you, and then when you're ready for a beer, just pour it in water and enjoy. And I've been quite intrigued. This is the first one I've seen on the shelves, so I'm going to go ahead and add it to water and see what it tastes like. So this is a pale ale. This comes in a four pack. The other beer that was available by Pat's Backcountry Beverages was a black IPA. So I chose the pale ale. And their motto here is bring refreshment anywhere. Here's the description on the package. Our 1919 pale rail is elegantly crafted using the world's most environmentally friendly brew stilling process. A delicate blend of aromatic malts and cascade hops delivers a complex, yet well-balanced craft brew wherever your adventures take you. Cheers. So this says add carbonation water to make a 5.2% uh, alcohol by volume pint. And uh, pint here, I should clarify, is 16 ounces. It's an American pint. I happen to have an American pint in my collection. So we're gonna go ahead and dive in. For some reason, I was expecting it to be a syrup, quite liquidy. Taste what's coming out there. Definitely quite alcoholic. Getting some uh, some roasted malts, some caramel, and darker roast notes. Not quite getting the hops. There's a, there's a hint of grapefruit there. All right, that's all in. And I carbonated this water already using my soda stream. And there we go, we have our 16 ounces. Gauging the appearance here, I can see it's a lovely copper, it's crystal clear. And I must say I'm quite impressed with the foam. It's off-white, but it's holding quite nicely. I was not expecting the foam formation as part of the beer. So that's a pleasant surprise. The hops are coming through in the aroma. There's a floral note. There's citrus notes somewhere between grapefruit and mandarin orange. The malts are in the background, but definitely there. It's like a, somewhere in the, the toffee slash molasses family. All right, let's try it. Well, the alcohol presence is uh, quite strong in the balance. It's uh, the first thing that's hitting me. The malt is still there, although the sweetness is gone. The sweetness that I got in the aroma, no longer there. I'm really just getting like a coffee-like roast character. There is a little bit of uh, citrus. The main thing I'm noticing here is the, the mouthfeel, which is very much similar to the mouthfeel of what's in this model here, just like a carbonated water. I'm missing that sort of fuller malt presence, that the body that I associate with beer. And I think that's also why the alcohol is sticking out.
I'm also not getting any type of yeast character, which is something that I would uh, like to see in a pale ale. The finish is bitter. I would say it's a, it's a medium, medium low bitterness, and it's a combination of hop resins and roasted notes. I'm not sure I would drink this even in a pinch. Um, not to mention the fact that I'm not sure how I would use this in a camping scenario. I'm certainly not going to pack all of this with me. Yeah, it's worth trying. Definitely interesting. I think the aroma was the best part. And the foam I can see is already dying. So there you go. Not the most glowing uh, review of the Pat's Backcountry Beverages 1919 Pale Rail. I must admit, I'm curious to try one of the powder ones as well. Hopefully I'll find one soon. Oh, that's tasty.